Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to do a demonstration and initial review of the Casa Bruce 5700 Pro. Full disclosure, I received this machine for free with the understanding that I would make a demonstration video about it. Nevertheless, I will still provide my honest opinion. Here are all the contents that are included with the machine. So we have the bean hopper, portafilter fork, a distributor, a tamper that has pretty good weight to it and feels quite nice, an extra grinder, and as you can see, it has conical burrs. And so this is actually a spare grinder assembly for some reason, since there is already one in the machine. A small steam pitcher, a small cleaning brush, a bean scooper, a steam tip tool, a double basket, which holds about 18 grams to 22 grams, a double spouted portafilter, which includes a single filter basket. This one holds about 12 grams to 14 grams of coffee. These are usually useless and I don't recommend using them. The portafilter has a nice weight to it and it's 58 millimeters. I'm going to use a double basket, of course. There's also a tamp mat and a fairly large water tank. Note that there is no knock box. That is probably the one must have item that is missing here. To set up the machine, first remove all the stickers around the tray and water tank. Install the water tank by sliding it into place in the back of the machine. Then install the bean hopper by aligning the unlock icon on the bean hopper with the arrow on the machine and then rotating the hopper until the lock icon aligns with the arrow. The portafilter forks fit this way on the portafilter so you can see which way is up. To install, you can just slide it into place. Then the portafilter just slides onto the forks easily and hooks into the back. Align your tamping mat, tamper, and distributor where it is convenient for you. Once all that is done, wash your water tank thoroughly and fill it up. The water tank actually has a nice hinge design on it. Install the water tank and plug the machine into the wall. At this point, you can lock the portafilter into the group head so it warms up with the machine and press the power button to turn on your machine. Once the machine is warm, place your pitcher under the steam wand and turn the steam wand knob to hot water. This step will flush water through the machine, flush for about 10 seconds. Now place the pitcher under the group head and press the single brew button. The machine will flush the group head and stop automatically. This button is obviously the power button. Once you turn on the machine, the single and double buttons will be blinking while the machine warms up. Warm up takes about a minute and a half. To adjust the grinder to finer, move the collar to lower numbers. And to adjust coarser, move towards the larger numbers. This button here adjusts how many seconds the grinder will stay on. If you are filling up the bean hopper, it will probably be necessary to use a scale to measure your dose initially until you can reliably figure out how many seconds you need to grind to get a desired dose. This is the menu button. Once you are in the menu, you can use the grinder button to move through the menu and press to select. In the menu, you can adjust the steam temperature. You can program your volumetric settings by selecting either single or double and then pressing the button to initiate brewing and when you have the desired volume of liquid you would just press the double button again to stop brewing and then that volume will be programmed to that button. Through the menu you can also access a flush cycle to clean the machine, the descale mode and reset all settings. The last two buttons on the face are the single and double buttons to brew by volume if programmed or just to brew manually if they are not programmed. On the side, you have the steam and hot water knob. For hot water, rotate the knob to hot water and wait for the water to come out of the steam wand. For steam, you want to rotate the knob to steam ready and wait for the light to turn solid. It takes about 10 seconds. Once solid, the steam wand is ready so rotate the knob to steam and start frothing your milk. 
When you're done, rotate the knob to off so the machine can release the pressure. The last button on the machine is this red button under the grinder, which is used to remove the installed grinder assembly to swap it out for the spare grinder assembly. Now it's time to brew. In this case, I am using 18 grams of beans pre-measured because I don't want to waste coffee and I want to test the retention performance of the grinder. I load the beans into the hopper and guide all the beans into the hole. To activate the grinder, press the portafilter against the machine. As you can see, 18 grams fits perfectly into the double basket without overflowing. The scale shows that my dose is 17.8 grams, verified on two different scales. A loss of 0.2 gram is actually pretty good, so the grinder has fairly low retention. Now, I am doing some WDT here with my own tool because I plan to drink the coffee and I want a good extraction. Then I use the distributor that came with the machine. While I am not certain of the diameter of the distributor tool, it is pretty decent and it doesn't hold any coffee residue. Then I tamp. The tamper is fine, but I wish the diameter was slightly bigger so that I could get as close to the basket wall as possible. Take a look, looks pretty nice. Now flush the group head. Then I am brewing this to get 38 grams of espresso. Flow is pretty nice. Crema and color look great and it tastes pretty good. The espresso flavors are not complex, but it's a shot that I would drink. Now let's try the steam wand. One thing I definitely don't like is a small pitcher. To make a latte with the right proportions, you will have to fill this milk jug almost to the top. The machine steams okay. I mean, it takes a while. That took me exactly one minute and 10 seconds, but it gets the job done. Here I am trying to do some latte art, but I am not really successful because the pitcher was a little too full. But if you use a different pitcher, you can see that you can make latte art. Admittedly, this design is not great, and that's because I'm not very consistent at making my latte art. But you get the idea. Let's take a quick look at the puck. It looks good. No excess water, and puck integrity looks pretty good. So what do I think about this machine? So I agreed to make a video for this machine because I really wanted to bring an espresso machine to my work. And when I reviewed the specs for this machine, I thought that this could actually work well. After brewing with it for a few days now, I'm happy with it. It can make good drinks if you know what you are doing or if you are willing to learn the process of making manual espresso. It has the basics down. It can grind well enough and without much retention. It can generate enough pressure to produce a good espresso with rich crema. And it can froth milk to a great consistency even to make latte art. And I have to emphasize that the startup is quite fast. So you can be brewing in just two minutes and even with the longer froth time, you can have a good latte in less than five minutes from pressing the power button, and that's quite good. Here, you can see the footprint difference between the Oracle Touch and the 5700 Pro. The Casa Brews is quite a bit smaller and shorter. I think this is meant to compete with the Breville Barista and other similar machines rather than the Oracle line. But since I don't have a barista, I can't do a side-by-side -side comparison of the 5700 Pro versus the Barista. At the time of this video, the 5700 Pro is on sale for $549 and the Barista Express sells for $599. If Bravo can send me a Barista, I am happy to do a head-to-head -head comparison video. Of course, I can't speak to the longevity of this machine yet. However, I will be using it for about 1-2 to two shots per day so I can make a follow-up video in a few months. To improve my experience, I do plan to buy a few things for this machine. A bigger milk jug, another WDT tool, a funnel, and a knockbox. You can find links for those in the video description. So who is this machine for? I think that if you're only making one or two drinks per day, you're willing to learn espresso basics and do a little bit of manual work, and you don't want to spend too much money, the Casa Brews 5700 Pro seems to be a great option. It starts up fast, it's easy to use, and it makes good drinks. I hope this video was helpful. 
I will be making more machine discovery videos and of course more Breva Oracle Touch videos and other coffee videos. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to click the like button and subscribe. Thank you.